Hey everybody, it's Rolls Gamer. Welcome to episode 22 of the Thousand Arms playthrough. We are officially in Rock Bit. Not the most exciting name for a town, I know, but that's what it is. And, uh, gonna run into somebody familiar here. This asshole again. You there. However, you this time now? we can fuck with him. Just watch. Hey, he's stealing diamonds. Ah, he's he's trying to get rich quickly, but diamonds are so captivating. Their sparkle is so devastating. Your treasures must be irritating. Therefore, I must be confiscating. In my hands, the empty sparkle of a diamond can be changed into dust that can save the world. For the sake of the world, give me your jewelry. It's an interesting arguing point there, Bandiger. Oh my god, this character's boy is so fucking ridiculous. I could not get away with that today. Well then, adios, amigo. You're like, hey, just turn turn up the camp levels to like fucking fucking 99. But here, yeah, you gain free ex there by making that choice. You gain free experience without having to fight him. So do it every single time. Now, what's in here? Well, we're going to get our next elemental spirit at the end of the cave. And we're going to find two, um, quote unquote, ultimate weapons. Not, see, that's a weird name for them. Two ancient weapons that you can, you know, the ones you can put into the forges and turn into some awesome equipment, but if you level grind effectively enough, your character's equipment already will be better than that, you know? But they're kind of neat to see, like Musa's giant axe and stuff, so it's sometimes fun to mess with. But in this area, you get, well, you are really exposed to Sedina's knife. And, uh, Mice's sword is also in a later zone. But, yeah. It should be said, this area is filled with annoying random encounters. It has, like, the second second level, quote-unquote, versions. Of, hey, China Girl, that's an... I never even saw that outfit. That's crazy. I'm going to have to put a, get a YouTube video of Nelsha's transformation. That's a character we'll be meeting a bit later. She's the late game party add-on. Well, in like an episode or two, she becomes a party member, so. But I never see all of her equipment. Oh, here's a little fun little thing, too. Fell over a rock. Rumble, 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 rumble. All the girls fall down. Go down there and rescue them. I like that it cuts there automatically too, so it doesn't fuck up any. Mice, you've come to save me. Yeah. Thanks, mice. Let's go. What took you so long? Let's go now. Sorry, Weena. And like I said, here's Sadina's knife, the rusty knife. But the fun, the most fun. I mean, I that's the way I usually pick them up, and it has a chance, I think, to increase intimacy with whoever you choose first. But they have reactions programmed for all three of them, like. If you pick Sedina first, then Weena, then the knife, then Kyleen, she'll be like, Treasure's more important, huh? Like, and she'll be pissed. But, just some good voice clip programming. I like it. But, um, what was I saying? Yeah, I don't have, I don't have, I never saw all of the, uh, 
transformations from um, Nelsha later in the game. I wonder how many outfits there really are. Because I never picked up that China girl before. There's like a bunny girl one too that I think I have gotten this playthrough that I've never had before. But as you can see, it's kind of a, a quick burn through this area. They kind of give give you a break with this. It's not. I guess no overworld has been really massive though. Like no cave. They just feel that way. Like the hill where we, after we fought Soshi, that seemed longer than it needed to be. But whatever. The nun, see, there's another outfit. I've seen that one though. Um, there's a little camp here. Looking for Mice's sword just to show off where to get it. Okay, no, that's the. Don't go there. I guess I did just go there and say fuck it. I kind of made a decision halfway through the game that I'm like, nah, I'm not showing off the, um, the the fucking weapons really. I made that decision after the first playthrough where I did, um, fucked up. And the shitty thing is, um, you can't, like, after I go to the sacred altar here, to the other realm, I guess, I can't just leave a weapon there the first time. It boots you out, because it doesn't assume that you have one. Wow, five levels, shit. Keep those weapons up to date. At least with your physical fighters. Oh wow, look I'm out already. She's only level three. That's crazy. Nice, good attack. Uh. Burp. But to the to the sacred realm. That's some Zelda shit right there. Um Yeah, this is the fire the fire elemental. It's decently damaging attack. And actually it might be the strongest attack wise until well, until we get the next one. But I always thought like the light spirit and the late game ones are like specials, so this is the strongest natural uh, spirit. Just a giant wave of fire hits the enemy, and it's pretty cool. And it's a guy, like it's not a dragon or anything. Look, it's just it's just a dude. They have a nice design choice there. Because some of them, like Akun, the water is dragon, the wind one, which we'll get later on. It's like a wolf. You know, they mix up the designs. Wonder if she's fixed a Langood. There's an exploration prompt you should pick up on. Hey, Marion. See, it doesn't take that long to fix a train or a boat. So we're gonna go find. I'm gonna go to the coast near Wayno Point. Okay. I guess that's where we're going then. I remember the first time I played, I skipped through that dialogue where she said where it was, and I just had to walk the whole way around the continent there to find 
to find the ship. It's like you need you know you need to look for a beach. Cause those are the the break off points for it, you know? But beyond that it's kinda like who knows? There we go. There we go. Awesome. I got a boat. And uh, this will be our de facto airship for the rest of the game. If you're familiar with the Final Fantasies series. Every RPG you need a mass, mass transit vehicle at the end. No, I've never heard of this land. No, oh, it's the ancient ruin land. It certainly feels like we're getting to the end of the game, doesn't it? When you bring in the ancient ruins. Final Fantasy X had it. Like, <laughs> seven had it, you know. I guess nine kind of had it. But, yeah, it's a common trope, for sure. Yeah, well, you have like RPG wise, you'll have like the desert. You'll have usually something in the air. It seems as popular. Whether it be like on an airship or like a sky city. Something on the water or islands. Or like you go the Final Fantasy X route and everything's basically islands for the first half of the game. Which is neat. Where am I sailing to? Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to speed her up, I guess. Because this game does have a wraparound. Like old RPGs used to, which was good. And be like, hey, you see right there, it's like, hey, you look like you wanted to go somewhere. It's a shame that, like, half the little islands and stuff that dot the map, I mean, we can, basically all that, that big area to the west on the map we've already been to and take kind of taken care of everything. Like that, the big area down below is where we were with a, with uh, Mount Hand and stuff, and above is where we started the game. But it'd be nice if there were like little hidden islands or something along the way. But not so much. You can visit the volcanic island again. Hey, look who stowed away. You can fight him again one more time in the game. It's nice. I like these re reoccurring optional fights. They're cool. Uh-huh. You're gonna die. Alright. I punched the mic. To Miskatone, see that right there, that buffering, the music changed. You go through the mist. It's here, baby. You've gone to the last stretch of the game, for sure. So, of course, we have to check in on the bad guy. Look at that. I don't know what that was to begin with. Like, they make literally making a giant sword. Then we fight like a giant boss at the end. But no. That is their, that is their airship. 
basically. It crimson, the ultimate weapon that turns the power of the light into the flame of darkness. Yep. It's being going to be fueled by the, the light spirit they stole from us on Volcanic Island. And it, it fucks some stuff up. And we are switching the game disc over and we will continue uh, in the next episode of the Thousand Arms playthrough. So until then, take it easy and come back, won't you please? But until then, bye bye.